a folk tale from Wales. The Lost Islands. Parts of the land to the west of Britain are sinking. At several places, at a particularly low tide, stumps of old forests and remains of ancient villages can be seen sticking up out of the sea. People say that if you sit on the seashore and listen, you can hear the old church bells tolling as they rock to and fro with the tide. Hundreds of years ago, the little people lived all over Britain. Now, after many invasions, and with the noise of modern life, the little people have retreated to live in the lonely places of Wales and Scotland and far Cornwall. They are secretive and keep themselves to themselves. But some of the old Celtic folk who have the power of second sight can see them. The little people dress in green, except for their hats, which are red. It does not do to offend them, for they have magical powers. Most people think it is wise to stay right away from the little people, or fairy folk, as they are sometimes called. However, one Welshman found great benefit from mixing with the fairies. His name was Griffith, and he lived at port called Milford Haven. Many years ago, fine markets were held at Milford Haven. The country folk for miles round would bring their goods to sell. The little people came to the market too. They never spoke, but if they wanted to buy any article, they would put down money at its side. Then, if the stale holder thought the price was fair, he would pick the money up. The fairies would then take the goods and go. If the price was not enough, the stall holder would leave the money lying until there was added to it, or until the fairies took up the money and left without buying anything. The fairies who went to Milford Haven were honest, never stole, and the local people were glad to trade with them. Very few people could see the fairies. Most traders merely saw the money appearing on their stalls and the goods going. However, Griffith, a corn merchant, could always see the little people, and so could a butcher who lived in the centre of town. Griffith and the butcher sold much corn and meat to the fairy customers. There must be plenty of them to need all those supplies, Griffith would say to the butcher. Mm, indeed, would be the reply. And where do they live? I ask myself. It is not in the valleys near here. I see no sign of them on my walks with my dog. Either they must be very lazy, that they grow no food for themselves, or they must live somewhere where there is no room to farm. Everyone puzzled about where the fairy folk lived, but no one knew. Then, one day, Griffith was walking high up by St. David's churchyard, when he happened to glance out to sea, and saw some islands where he had never seen islands before. Having inherited second sight from his mother, Griffith knew that these were the green isles of the ocean, the lost islands of long ago. If the islands are in the mood to show themselves, then I will go to look at them, he thought. He started down towards the seashore, but at once the islands disappeared. 
He walked back up to St. David's churchyard, and again he could see the islands. Griffith understood at once what was happening. I can see the islands only when I am standing on sacred land, he muttered. A lesser man would have stayed in the churchyard and admired the islands from there, but Griffith was clever. He cut the piece of turf on which he was standing and carried it down to his boat. Then he stood on the turf in the boat and looked seawards. He saw the islands clear and bright. Standing on the turf all the way, Griffith steered towards the islands and landed on the largest. At once he met some of the fairy folk who bought corn from him. They greeted him in surprise and laughed when they learned how he had found his way to their home. Then they showed him the beauties of the little islands. Many islands have disappeared beneath the waves, they said, but some have become invisible by magic, and it is on these islands that we live, safe from you big trampling mortals. Then they sent Griffith home with his arms full of gifts, and they continued to trade with him for many years and made him a rich man. However, the fairies made Griffith give them sacred turf, which had guided him to the islands, and no matter how often he stood in St. David's churchyard staring out to sea, he never saw the islands again. <laughs>